In this video, I will be showing the following. How to Add your printer, connect your sonic pad within Orca, how to import files, set up basic print profiles, get the best print quality. Enjoy! Let us start by adding your printer. Now choose custom firmware or your printer's specific profile from the drop down menu. If you are using the Sonic Pad, you can also choose the Clipper firmware. Orca has a ton of pre made printer profiles. In this example, I will be using the Ender 3 S1 Pro. Click Confirm. Click the Edit Preset button. Here we start by setting the bed size. Click the Set button. I set my bed size to 235 by 235 and click OK. Now you set your printer's print height. In my case, it's 270 millimeters. Set your G code flavor according to what you are using. I'm using Clipper for the Sonic Pad. No more settings is needed. In the Basic Informations tab, now save the information. Give it a name. I include Sonic Pad in my saved profile. Press OK when done. You can now close the window. This part is for Sonic Pad users who wants to use the web user interface. Click the connection symbol. Make sure your host type is set to Octo in Clipper. Here you type in your Sonic Pad's IP address, which you can find in your Sonic Pad in the Network Settings tab. When done, you can perform a connection test. Now click OK. We are now ready to import our first file. On the left, you have all the settings. There is a quality, strength, speed, support, and others tab. In the quality tab, there is some basic settings, like the seam position. I normally choose aligned. The nearest option will place it near corners. I normally use the pre-configured settings in most cases. The ironing option will give you a smooth top surface. Turn this feature on if you want to have a smoother top layer. You can in some cases increase print quality by changing the printing order of inner or outer and in fill. I normally use the option inner to outer and then in fill order setting. Now let's go to the strength tab. Here you can start by changing the wall line count. The top surface pattern is how the print head moves. I always choose monotonic. I think it gives the best finish. The density depends on the object you print. In the infill section, you can choose the density of the infill. I always choose rectilinear. It gives less warping 
and is very strong. It also has the least in fill to wall overlap. As for basic settings, we leave the rest as is. Now let's head over to the Speeds tab. The speed depends on your current printer. I normally use 35 to 45 millimeters per second for the first layer, which I think gives the best first layer bed adhesion. Again, depending on your current print setup, you should adjust your speeds according to this. For perfect print quality, I normally use between 80 to 120 millimeters per second. Depending on how perfect your printer is calibrated, you need to adjust the remaining print speeds accordingly. If you are using a sonic pad, you can do different tests, like pressure advance, acceleration, and so on. You never want the slicer to control your speeds if using a sonic pad. Now to the supports tab. Remember, these settings are just to give you the basic knowledge to get started using Orca Slicer. I think the supports in Orca is some of the best. They are very easy to remove and won't scar the print surface. I normally use AutoTree Organic Supports. I bet you will be amazed how great this supports work in Orca. Before we proceed, I would appreciate if you liked my content so far that you would hit the like button. Do not forget to subscribe, so you do not miss out on new videos. Thanks. Let us proceed. You can also choose to check the On Build Plate only. This function will, as it says, only make support for things touching the bed. Let us head over to the last tab, the Others tab. Here you got options like Skirt and Brim, which are helpful on smaller objects with a small bed base. It also prevents your print to not curl the corners, also called warping. The skirt loop option is a parameter line around your printed object. This can also be used as a bed adhesion guide to check if your print sticks to the bed. The brim option can be used for prints with a small bed base, but also to prevent print warping as mentioned earlier. I normally use outer brim only, but it depends on what you are printing. Prime tower is for prints with multiple colors. It makes sure if you change filament, that the nozzle is clean for previous filaments. No more settings is needed in this basic parts guide. You can always go back and make changes and try other settings. In the printer's settings tab, you can choose your type of nozzle. For normal PLA filament, brass is the most common. Now, let us take a look at some G-code settings, which can be user specified. The G-code is the code which your printer reads. Most printer errors often starts here. Specific start and end G-codes can be found on the web. You can also configure your own. It is all about preferences. The Multi-Materials tab is for multiple color prints. I will cover this in another video. Now it is time for the Extruder tab. Here you will set your nozzle diameter. The most common is 0.4 millimeter. Another option here is Z-Hop which makes your print head move up before it moves to next starting point. Direct extruders should have a retraction speed of around 40 to 60 millimeters per second and a length of 0.4 to 0.6 millimeter. Z-Hop is also used to prevent the nozzle hitting already printed parts when the print head moves around. The Motion Ability tab is where you set all your settings, like acceleration and deaccelerations and so on. I will cover this in-depth in a future video. When all settings are made, we are ready for slicing our object.
The sliced information shows the time it takes for each part of the print. If you want to tweak settings for faster print, you can easily see what part to tweak. If your printer is connected via USB, you can print directly from Orca. Are you using a sonic pad? You can send the print directly and you can start it from the web user interface. In the top, you have the preview, device, project and calibrations tab. I will only be covering the preview and the device tab in this video. The preview tab is where you can watch how the file looks like when it's sliced. It can come in use if you want to look for overhangs or different crucial parts of your prints. The device tab is where your printer's web user interface is shown. If you, for example, use a sonic pad, you will have your web user interface directly in Orca and you do not need to have a separate browser open. From here, you can control the sonic pad and your printer from auto level, probe adjust, time lapse, and so on. You can follow the nozzle for each line it makes of the print. In the G code preview, you just need to load the file you are printing. You can experiment with the different preview settings. I will go through these settings in the in-depth video of Orca. Next we have the Consoles tab. Here you are able to send commands. It is here you will type in the commands for things like pressure advance and so on. It is also here you can see error messages and every move your printer makes. The Files Lists tab is where the uploaded files will be. And from here, you just right-click and click Print. The Time Lapse tab I will cover in a future video, like how to set it up, etc. The Bed Mesh tab is where you can see your current bed mesh. And if you are having issues with your bed mesh, you can from here. Delete the profile and make a new one. In some cases, it can solve bed mesh issues by clearing the profile here. And now to the most important tab, the Configurations tab. This is where your printer's CFG file is stored. It is also here you can edit it. So if you ask in a forum, and they ask for the print CFG file, you now know where to find it. The Systems tab is where you can restart your firmware or check the Clippy log and so on. Sometimes you might need to check for specific errors, which will be in those logs. And last, we have the Settings tab, which I will cover in a future video. This is where you set up your webcam for time-lapse and macros and so on. You can also do this directly on the Sonic Pad, but for some, this is much easier. This is all I had for you in this video. I hope this video will be useful and will guide you in the right direction. Please leave a comment in the comments section when you have tried this slicer. I would like to know what you think about Orca so far. If you liked this video, give it a like. And do not forget to subscribe. By subscribing, you support me in the work I do, and it will help the channel grow. Subscribers also gets notified when new videos are uploaded. Do not miss out on that. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.